I knew exactly the wheat that I, the color I wanted, so I was watching the fields here after they harvested until it changed to the color that I wanted. And the, there was one farm that I really loved the wheat in, so um, I would sneak in at 2.30 in the morning after they'd harvested the wheat and just cut the, glean the straw. And um, I was out there and I would smell, uh, sometimes I'd smell skunk and I would think, <laughs> I'm gonna get sprayed out here. And the deer would run upon me and snort, so um, I was out there with my little headlamp filling my bags of straw up for it. But I got the perfect straw that I wanted that had the right color. Spend an afternoon talking with artist Shay Hembry and you'll cover a lot of ground. I think a lot about imagining um, a color that don't exist. Like, you can't even get your head around it. Like, it's hard to imagine that down below us right now, deep in the ground, there's lava. You know, like, always below your feet, there's lava. We're mainly empty space, you know. We're just atoms that are spinning and they occupy this certain amount of space. But um, humanity, all of humanity, if you remove the empty space from humanity, like, what, seven? There's seven billion of us. Um, it's just the size of a sugar cube. But that's crazy. That's as much matter as humanity is. It's a square of sh one sugar cube. I mean, it's, that's not a lot. With his new show at Bryce Wolkowitz Gallery in Manhattan, Hembry's lifelong fascination with science is on display. So 25% of the universe is dark matter. 70% um, is dark energy, and 5% is like atomic matter, the tangible. So how do you show something that we don't really, it's a mystery, we don't want it. So feathers are this lightweight kind of ephemeral thing. So I let that be the 25% here, like this invisible thing lifting up this raft, which has the elements on it. So um, all the, there's like nickel and different, um, different stones that represent the elements. And, and then the red thread is which is such a good lifeline that kind of binds it all together. So like this is life, this is atomic matter here. I mean, I'm not a scientific illustrator, I'm not a scientist. It's, they're not illustrations, they're poems, and the, kind of, the show is Dark Matters. It's um, meditations, it's my kind of ponderings about what is this possibly, um, this mystery. Hembry was invited to give a TED Talk. Next, this is by Thomas Swifton. TED, Technology, Entertainment, and Design, is the global set of conferences formed to showcase ideas worth spreading. When I went on the TED stage in Long Beach, I was really excited about it and I wanted it to be truly my voice and um, that might not have been the best way to go about it, but it certainly was me, so yeah. I was in my 20s before I ever went to an art museum. I grew up in the middle of nowhere on a dirt road in rural Arkansas, an hour from the nearest movie theater. And I think it was a great place to grow up as an artist because I grew up around quirky, colorful characters who were great at making with their hands. Um, and my childhood is more hick than I could ever possibly relate to you, and also um, more intellectual than you would ever expect. For instance, me and my sister, when we were little, we would compete to see who could eat the most squirrel brains. This is gonna sound so fake, they do taste nutty. I mean, like, it, it really, they look like cauliflower, but they really taste nutty. Um, and, but I love squirrel tongue, especially, because it's like a jerky. Um, and it's, I like really tough chewy meat, and so like tongues were really great. My sister wanted, I got all the tongues, but we would fight over the brain. Yeah. Actually, squirrel season started yesterday. I talked to my mom this morning. Dad, they ate squirrel yesterday. He just, they like squirrel today. He's excited. They like, they, it's their favorite meat, so. So what I did was I invented a uh, hundred artists from around the world. I figured out their bios, their passions in life, and, um, <laughs> their art styles, and I started making their work. Um, and so, for example, in realist paintings, ranges from like this, which is kind of old master style, to um, really realistic still life, to this type of painting where I'm painting with a single hair. Going to his home in, in, in beautiful French town, New Jersey, uh, you know, really, it could not be uh, a, a greater contrast to kind of the hustle and bustle of, of Manhattan. These are really cool. These are all from um, Maison Creek in Illinois. It's uh, little fern fossils. I think they often freeze them and then they put them in boiling water and they'll crack where the fossil is. 
the first thing that you realize is, I mean, here's an artist and, and somebody who is, is almost like an archaeologist, I mean, a real lover of culture and history. He doesn't have a shtick. There, there, there's not something that he's specifically trying to push. His interests are very much pure and real. With eight, you have the full prism plus black and white because you, you know, dark matter is something we can't see. There's nothing there. So playing with. Uh... You know, myself as an artist, I think I was, I was quite old before I was willing to say I was an artist. Um, it seems so haughty and so weird to say that I was an artist. Um, so foreign, um, but I would have said I was a maker. It's so interesting, if it's 95% of existence, I'm really curious, what does that look like? How does it work? And uh, how does it affect everything else? And when you think of it, if we're, if, you know, like atomic matter is only less than 5%, like it's so rare, it's uh, what we know and what we see is so rare. Um, it's like we're the little jewels spread out against this great black body. So um, I'm just so curious of how it works and what it looks like. I have to follow the idea. I have to explore.